my wife and I just picked up this four-wheel campers Hawk slide-in for the Ram Power Wagon just a couple days ago and we are both super excited to get out and have some great adventures in this. But before we set off and get it all dirty and start putting all our gear in there, what I wanted to do in this video was just give you a quick tour of the features and options that are on this camper. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today I'm gonna to take you on a tour of our brand new four-wheel campers Hawk slide-in. I am super excited about this, and so is my wife, because this has been kind of a long-term dream of mine to have a full-size vehicle with some type of camper on the back that we can get inside, out of the elements, out of the wind, and sleep comfortably at night. And this four-wheel camper is compact enough, but still has some of those creature comforts that we're gonna be able to get out to some really cool off-the-grid places and be nice and comfortable. Call it clamping if you want to, but I'm excited for using this thing. And our plans here in the very near future is we're gonna be doing a long trek up to the Pacific Northwest. And this, for the two of us, is gonna be perfect. Now, what I wanna to do today in this video is take you on a walk around of this, show you all the features and options. I think you're really gonna enjoy seeing what's on here. Okay, we're gonna start with the outside features of the Hawk Camper. And you'll see here that this is the white smooth-sided one, which I like, I think that's a nice look. And I love that it's got this black stripe because that just kind of flows perfectly with the Ram Power Wagon. And a lot of people are probably gonna ask, why did I opt for a slide-in model instead of doing kind of a full flatbed model? And there's a couple reasons for that. One is the price. It's significantly more expensive to get the top model that goes on a flatbed. Plus you have the cost of the flatbed and your center of gravity is higher and the weight is much, much more. In fact, if I was gonna do something like that, this is not the right vehicle. I would need to step up to the Ram 3500. I'm pretty happy with this camper. I think this is gonna fit the bill perfectly. Plus it's low profile, it's not terribly heavy and we can take it on and off pretty easily. Uh, and that's where I'll start here. So on each one of these corners are the camper jack mounts here. And when we installed this, because my truck is on 37s and it's lifted, we had to use some blocks just so those camper jack stands could reach. Plus we had to do an extension on this side just so we could get it through because the tires are just a little wide. Uh, but what's cool about these little mounts here is they're super solid and you can mount fuel cans, water cans, axes, shovels, any of that kind of accessories here on the side. There's a couple options for that. So that's something that we'll be looking into doing. Now, down below here is some LED lighting and there's one light on each corner. And the first night I camped in this, it was really nice to be able to have kind of that ground light. You didn't have this light shining right in your face. It was just this nice, comfortable light down there. So that that's a pretty nice feature to have. There is some LED lighting on each side and some amber lights on the back. And I'll tell you when uh, you're inside and it's totally dark outside and you're hearing some noises outside, it's nice to kind of turn on those lights and just kind of look around a little bit. So uh, having those exterior lights is gonna be super nice. Uh, in here is what's really cool. And this is the Dometic hot water heater. And let me tell you, this is a nice luxury item to have. Now, the water tank in this camper is 20 gallons, but when you opt for the hot water heater, you get an extra six gallons. So we have a total of 26 gallons of water. And when I was making coffee the first morning, to be able to heat the water before I put it on the stove, man, that water, that water just started percolating super fast. And so that's really nice. Plus, we've got an exterior shower option. So we can take some hot showers. Uh, if we want to just even wash your hair, that's gonna be really nice. And there's a shower inside that we'll talk more about. But having hot water, whether it's to make coffee, to wash your dishes, to take shower, super nice. And I do like the fact that we have an extra six gallons on board. Uh, up here is where the water is filled. And so you can fill up the tank using this port here. You just basically hook up a hose there and fill up that 20 gallons. And then on this side is if you are at a campsite or a location uh, where you just have direct water source, you put a little regulator on here, hook up the hose, and then that will keep uh, water pressure inside the system. So that's really nice to have. Down here is the gray water drain. Now there is no gray water storage in this camper. So what you have to do is uh, un undo this guy, hook up a hose, and then have that drain to a bucket or a, an approved source. 
And so there's also another drain on the out, on the back that we'll talk about. Um, that one is for the shower. This one is pretty much just for the sink. And then here is the Dometic furnace. And uh, this gets hot, so don't touch this when it's running. But let me tell you, the first night that I got to camp, uh, when I was coming home after putting this thing on, I was up in the Sierra Mountains. It was a huge thunderstorm. There were like 20 mile an hour winds. And I was getting outside, getting the truck leveled, uh, getting everything set up. It's a pretty quick setup, uh, but I was pretty wet and pretty cold. And it was nice to be able to crawl inside, turn that heater on and warm up. Super nice. Uh, over here is where you hook up to shore power. So uh, there are two 100 amp hour AGM batteries inside and there's solar on the roof up there. It's 160 watts of solar on the roof. And I've been running the fridge uh, ever since I started and I haven't turned it off and it's not even, it's not even flinching, it's loving it. But if you get to a campsite or you just wanna charge those batteries at home, you can just hook up to shore power here. This is 30 amps, I think it is. Um, so I think that's everything here on the side. Let's go on to the other side. Now there's not quite as much stuff on this side, but one of the key things is this nice aluminum awning. This thing is very nice. Now I don't typically use my awning just because there's a lot of work to kind of unzip it and pull it out where this, it just has a crank and it comes right out. You drop a couple legs. It's super easy to deploy this awning. So I think I'll be using an awning a lot more. Uh, over here is, this is a little vent area for the refrigerator. So inside there's an 85 liter fridge and I have had that fridge turned on ever since I left four wheel campers after installing this and the solar and just driving the truck has kept up with the power, no problems. So I really like the fact that I could just leave that on full time. You're not supposed to store a whole bunch of stuff in here uh, just because you need the ventilation, but I might put a few things in there, but don't tell anybody. Uh, we have another exterior light out here. Uh, and then here is one of the amber lights. So that's gonna be nice. There's one here and there's one on the back. And so that, you know, turn those on and it's not gonna mess up your night vision too much. And hopefully you shouldn't attract as many bugs as turning one of these bright LED lights on. And then in here, we've got two 10 gallon propane tanks. Now I, I'm you know, interested to see how long these will last, especially in the winter if we're running the furnace and we're cooking in there, uh, running the hot water heater. Uh, but having two of these should be pretty nice because uh, the minute one runs out you, you hook it up to the other one and then you know you need to get the next one filled out there's no kind of um, there's no gauge or anything to tell you how full they are just gonna have to kind of gauge it a little bit so <laughs> gauge it a little bit no pun intended anyway uh, uh, excited to see how long those will last all right now on the back side there's a couple things back here worth talking about and one is uh, these two doors right here, this one uh, is to fill the toilet. That's right, there is a toilet inside uh, this camper. It's built in, and we'll talk a little bit more about that inside, but this is where you fill the flush part of the toilet. And then down here is where the waste is. And so this is a little cassette that pops out. You take this out, you go dump this, and I think that is about four gallons. And so having Having a toilet is gonna be very nice, especially, you know, uh, a nice little privacy for my wife or in the middle of the night when nature calls, you know, you don't have to climb down the ladder of a rooftop tent, go find a place out in the middle of the dark and just take care of your business inside of there. Uh, on the corners here, you'll see that there are four steps and these are gonna be nice because you get up there and clean the solar panel. There is a roof uh, rail up there where you can attach a Yakima rack. I don't think I'm gonna do that, uh, but I might put some Max tracks or even maybe another solar up there. Uh, the option is available, which is nice. Over on this corner is another outlet. And this is if you wanted to do like a portable solar blanket, you could hook that up so you could have two solar panels going. Uh, and then up here is another one of those amber lights I was talking about. And you can see that's a pretty good reach for me. I'm pretty tall uh, and I can reach that. My, there's no way my wife is reaching that. So something to think about if you were gonna put bigger tires and lift your truck, you might get kind of hard to start reaching some of these things. Uh, what else am I missing back here? I think, I think that's it. Oh, this little latch right here, that holds the door. So when you open the door, there is a deadbolt on here, by the way, which is nice. But when you open the door, this latch just grabs there and keeps that door from opening and closing. Uh, one nice thing is there's a nice big window on this door. And so yes, uh, I can still see through my rear view mirror to the back of the truck, which is very nice. But there is a curtain here and we've got a screen door to keep those bugs out, but you still get some of that ventilation. All right, let's pop this thing up. Let's go inside.
Now, popping the top is much easier than I thought. There are just six latches around. You pop those off and then you crawl inside and then I'll show you, it's just a quick little push and uh, secure of the walls in there. But one of my things that I'm very thankful that I did is we installed these amp power steps and that makes getting up here by doing this super easy. Okay, once you're inside the camper, there's two little panels that we just have to push up. So we're gonna undo this little latch right here. And then we're gonna press up. That's one, super easy. And then on the opposite side, we've got this little pole right here that we're gonna unbuckle. We're gonna press up and press up on the wall. Button that up. And that's it, we are set up and ready to go. Now, if I wasn't filming, I probably could do that all in under a minute. And welcome to the inside of our four wheel camper. There's actually a lot of space for as small as this is. Now, I think the top is like six feet, six inches. I'm six two, and so you can see I've got plenty of headroom here. And if I stretch out arm to arm, I can't touch the walls just barely. Lots of room in here. Uh, let me open these windows here. So on the outside of this, we have the optional thermal pack, which is kind of this secondary layer, which helps to kind of keep things insulated in here a little better. Uh, and this is optional. You can take this on or off. And then there are four windows on each side. So you take the vinyl cover off, and then there is a vinyl window, and then you can pull that off and then you have a screen, a nice mesh screen, and there's four of those, so you can get some nice ventilation. Now, up top, we have one fan, and that's an exhaust fan, or it will blow down inside, and then the other one is just a vent, so that opens up and just allows fresh air to come in. I will say it probably would have been nice to get two fans, uh, so you could have one blowing in and one sucking out, but I think this one is gonna be fine. I do have one a little complaint uh, on this fan is even on the lowest setting, it's a little noisy. Uh, and I know that there's some uh, newer fans that Four Wheel Campers is using that are, uh, they have like a remote and they have different speeds. Uh, I may end up swapping this one out. I'm not even sure what that cost is or what's involved, but this one's a little, little noisy. Uh, also up on the roof, we've got three of these LED light strips. And you can see these are just a quick little touch. And then if you hold it, you can dim them up or dim them down. And I found that very helpful uh, when I was at camp and it was dark outside. You don't need those full on brights uh, because if you keep them dim, you can still be able to see outside if there's some moonlight outside. Uh, over here, we've got a nice mirror. And uh, up here, there is a smoke alarm. And I think that covers it for the roof. And so here is where the kitchen is. So we've got this nice big counter because we went with the flat stove. Uh, options. So this is a Dometic two burner stove with a nice glass flat top and then the Dometic sink, which also is flush mounted. And we've got a faucet in there again with hot and cold running water, but it's nice to have all this flat area to work with. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Down here, we've got a uh, little utensil drawer. I think that's what we're gonna use it for. We're still trying to figure out, you know, where we wanna put stuff. We need to figure it out soon because we're leaving in a couple days. Uh, down here, we've got a nice big storage area. We're putting kind of pots and pans and plates and stuff in there, but we'll see how that goes. And then this cabinet down below is where the two batteries are. So no, not a lot of storage in there. Uh, that's just access panel for the batteries. I almost wonder if you could do like a tray in there above the batteries just to put some things. Down below is the carbon monoxide uh, monitor. And then we have all the switches for all the lights on the outside. Uh, over here is where we have our little monitor for our batteries and our shore power. So we can see how much solar is coming in. We can see how many volts the batteries are at right now. Um, so that's pretty handy. Uh, there is also down here a, a little monitor that tells you what level uh, the batteries are at. It also tells you what your water level is and then the water pump is down there. In here is where you have access to the water pump and all the water valves. We've just kind of thrown some soap and sponges and just 
uh, towels in there. I don't know if those will stay, but I think they're harmless uh, being stored in there. Uh, and then uh, up here is where the hot water uh, is. So you turn that on and it takes about 10 minutes and you can get hot water going. The pilot light kicks on automatically. Uh, and then you have the thermostat for the furnace. And so here's where the furnace is uh, and you can direct that wherever you want. And I'll tell you, uh, it heats it up in here really quick, especially with that thermal pack on here. It kept it nice and warm all night long. I slept in uh, just under 40 degree weather uh, and that kicked on a couple times through the night, kept it nice and warm in here. Uh, down here is where all your fuses and circuit breakers are for your power. And then the panel down below there is to access uh, the turnbuckles. So there are four turnbuckles that keep this camper secured to the truck bed. And I was told I need to check those about every 500 miles. I said you shouldn't have any issues with them, but you always want to make sure that they are good and tight. And then lastly, right here is the power uh, unit. So we have four USBs and one uh, 12 volt right there. And those are hooked up to the battery. So I have access to power to those all the time. The 110 though, however, only works if you are hooked up to shore power. That's a little disappointing. I would like to be able to have an inverter that I could just plug into uh, if I'm off the grid. So that might be something that I make a modification to down the road. But for now, uh, that 12 volt system is gonna work uh, just fine for us. All right, let me turn the camera around. I'll show you what's on this side. One thing this camper does not have is air conditioning. It is an option. Uh, I don't think you can get it though because uh, it kind of goes where the toilet is and there is our toilet. And so this pops up and, uh, and I have already tried it. You can use this toilet with the top down. So if you just need to pull over on the side of the road somewhere and use the restroom, you can. Now it is a manual flush and that seat swivels back and forth so you have a, you know a little clearance if you need it it's not really in the way in that way and then uh, up top you have storage i think we'll probably keep cleaning supplies and stuff like that and then there's another little storage on the side for you know toilet paper and whatnot and then the big area right there that's actually where the propane tanks are so unfortunately that's not a storage area now if you don't get the toilet uh, you get a ton more storage here uh, so that is something you lose when you get the built-in toilet we could have done storage with a cassette toilet but I really like this option. I think this is gonna be perfect. Uh, and my wife, she's pretty happy with that. Uh, up top here is uh, some good storage and you've got a little mirror, so you kind of have like a little vanity set up, but I think we're gonna probably keep food and stuff uh, up in here. And then here is our 85 liter fridge. And now this fridge only runs off of uh, AC or DC. There is not a propane. Uh, so you are only gonna get this running off the batteries or offshore power. And as I mentioned, I have not turned this off since I got it and it has been running off the batteries with the solar and with me driving around charging the batteries, no issues at all. And then down below here is another good little storage area. So there's quite a, quite a bit of storage in here for dry foods. Uh, the fridge is big enough to hold most stuff. There is a fire extinguisher down there. And uh, I think that's it. I gotta tell you, Filming in a small space like this with a wide angle lens, it's something I'm gonna have to get used to. All right, let me show you the dinette and we'll talk about the bed. Okay, so I mentioned that this is a front dinette model. Now there are some models where it has a side dinette or a side couch, uh, but this one has it here in the front and I really like this. There is a lot of space. You could fit two people, total of four, uh, at this dinette and you have this nice table that swivels around and I gotta say you know if we want to play a card game in the middle of the night or if I need to edit some video uh, this would be super nice to have. Now there is storage in the front here and underneath each of these cushions there's some storage as well. Uh, we're still trying to figure out what we want to put down there right now we just kind of have some junk thrown in there but we're gonna have to get way more organized. Now the cool thing is is this table will pop into here and then you can lay all four of these um, mattresses flat and you can actually sleep here and I can lay side to side. It's long enough uh, to do that. Now these are a little firm, uh, but I think a little kid or something that would be perfect. There are windows on each side and there are curtains so you have privacy, but you can have some nice ventilation. And then there's this nice big window in the front and there's also uh, a curtain there. And this rod right here is for opening and closing the awning. And so that's where that is stored. And then the one thing that's really cool about this is right down here is where my feet are is a grate and this grate is for the shower and so what's really cool is there is a drain there now this is a drain that goes to the back of the camper it's not the same drain that I showed you over there on the side but just right here is where you hook up 
the hose, uh, and you can have hot or cold, or warm water, whatever you can dial in the temperature. And then up top here is where you hook up that shower, and then you put a curtain here, and you can take a shower right here. It's not you know, the easiest setup, but when you have been out for three, four, five days, you know, to have a shower at day four uh, is a pretty nice feature. You know, we gotta do, you know, the Navy guy, you gotta do a Navy shower. You gotta just, you know, hose yourself off real quick, soap up, and, and then uh, hose yourself off again. Uh, you don't wanna waste a ton of water. You only have 20 gallons. Uh, so two people taking showers every day, that could be a challenge. Uh, but if we were hooked up to a campsite or something like that, uh, no problems uh, taking a shower in here. I think that's a super cool feature. Now we do lose storage. Because uh, if you have the non-shower option, then that uh, area where my feet are is actually a cupboard for storage. But I think the shower option is going to be the better deal. All right, let's talk about this bed. All right, now let's talk about the bed. Now, typically, uh, four-wheel campers come standard with just about a twin-size bed. It's actually just a, a little bit smaller than I think my rooftop tent is. But the cool feature is, is that we got the king size one. Now I think the king was probably a little overkill. We've been using it in the queen fashion. So you can slide this out, put these two pads in here, and then right there is a queen. And my wife and I can easily sleep side to side. Actually, I slept side to side the very first time. I have just a couple of inches uh, on the head and the feet, so it was fine. Uh, now, if you want, and we have two more of these mattresses, we just took them out. You can extend this all the way out and have a king, and then you can uh, sleep north to south. And so that's pretty nice. Now, one thing I'll say is these are a little firm, and, uh, and both my wife and I prefer a little more comfort. So I got this memory foam mattress, and that fits right on there with our pillows, the memory foam, uh, the blanket and stuff, we'll still be able to close this up uh, in here. And what's really nice is, you know, we're using uh, pillows and blankets and sheets. Uh, we're not having to hunker down in sleeping bags when we're sleeping up here. It's gonna be very comfortable. Again, we got the two windows over there so we can have a little ventilation in the middle of the night if we need it. Plus you got the ventilation on top. And then hopping down over here, you just, you know, basically step on to one of the couches and step down. Uh, it's gonna be pretty nice having this bed uh, on a long trip. Now let me throw a preemptive strike out there because I know I'm probably going to get asked a few questions about what about the Jeep and the rooftop tent and the trailer and all that. And let me just say, those are still going to be in full use here on the channel. It just depends on where I'm going and what I'm doing. For example, when I go do the Rubicon Trail, I'll probably do like I normally do. I'll take the Wrangler and I'll sleep in the back of the, the Jeep. You know, that just works for me. If we're back in the mountains like we were in Arizona, or it's tight, technical, hard trails, this is not the right vehicle to take. But taking the Jeep with the trailer, uh, that will work really well. But I think when my wife and I are out on long adventures, like we're getting ready to set off to, this is going to be the perfect application. It's going to be nice and comfortable. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to it and having her out on some more adventures and being comfortable is super super important to me It's gonna be great to be able to spend more time with her out here and uh, and you guys get to know her a little bit more So anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed that quick little walk around of our brand new four-wheel campers Hawk I think as we get more settled into it We can have another conversation about how we've outfitted and things we like and things we don't like uh, but right now the newness hasn't even worn off yet, so there you go, guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can follow along on our future adventures in this truck and camper setup. Thanks for watching.